back. Swell season. Surf radio. Part two. Part two. We got this uh, double header dynamo Saturday yeah. recording here. Um, uh, we had the one of the stars of the film NF2 by C. CJ Hobgood was just on the show. And now we have the director sitting right across from us. Justin Purser, thanks so much for coming on the show, man. Jesus. Thanks for having me, and thanks for the pizza. Oh, yeah, dude. Our pleasure. <laughs> Everyone who comes on Swell Season gets really good pizza. That's not That's... true, but the best guests. <laughs> but the best, well, <laughs> we don't. Want we get the, out of town others. guests. Yeah, yeah we try guests. to we try to pimp them out. We with pizza. It our, worked. That was what got us to come here. Yeah, we were like, we want pizza. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're the, the the NF2 by C. Such a wonderful title. Paul Revere reference, I assume, right? Yeah. So was it just, that was natural. It's about twins in the ocean, but where did you draw that? Did that come from something beyond that it works? Is that just buried really in there well? or were you just reading something and it just popped up? Well, I think originally we called it the sea in between when we first started. And then what happened was there's already, I think a documentary, but there's definitely a music album of, uh, and to called, the scene between so we're like we can't use that so we knew to want something similar so we kind of dug through dug through and like i just wrote many 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 variations and then by adding and um because a lot of vod yeah. you guys know this yeah as uh, it's alphabetical <laughs> yeah, so yeah. smart start with an a so yeah. and it just worked in the paul revere reference and it just it no just, it's but it's yeah, better yeah, it has yeah. sort of an illusion yeah. and it has and two if by c it kind of has like a ring to it i don't know it's, it's worked so far so Hopefully it works when it comes out too. <laughs> now you you started out doing sir films, but mm-hmm. then left basically. I, yeah. uh, all the way live. One of yeah. one of my favorites. You guys oh, came okay. to New York. I yeah. was like all pumped on that. Yeah. Um, but then you left. Uh, obviously, a lot of fil- filmmakers leave the surf world. I feel like yeah. after they are tired of not getting paid. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what what's it been like to kind of come back a little bit to it? It's yeah, that's, that's 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 a really interesting question. No one's ever asked that, and um, it's, it's it was Thank very you. surreal. <laughs> and when you were talking to CJ about New York and asking him about coming up here and stuff, when we shot that, we we never been to New York. And it was before nine eleven. Before nine eleven, yeah, Twin Towers yeah. and everything. And um, it was just random. I was like, I was starting to get in this mindset where I'm like, I want to take trips that don't involve surfing. Because every trip I had taken, because I grew up surfing, and they grew up surfing, was always bring a surfboard. You didn't go anywhere. It wasn't cool. So I actually think we asked Damien. He didn't want to go. So we were, I was like, let's just go to New York. So we came to New York and just for the first time ever and just cruised around. And I had the camera. And we were at the time, we were shooting all the way live. And then I put that in all the way live. And nobody wanted it. They were like, don't, you can't put that. Like, that doesn't make any great. sense. Yeah. And it was 15 seconds. It yeah. was like, and it's just NYCJ. It just kind of worked. It was, and then his little voiceover. Um, saying they had never taken a trip that wasn't surfing. So it was kind of fun. So it was interesting because after that movie came out, that's when like all the kind of surfing in New York exploded. And I'm not saying we're taking credit for it, but we're going to take credit for it. <laughs> yeah, no. do it. Um, <laughs> Own it. Own it. Um, well, it, it was funny because I've yeah. never seen that in, as New York surfer being like, Oh, what the fuck? They were in New York. We could have taken them surfing, you know? Uh, yeah. like, <laughs> well, we didn't bring surfboards. <laughs> Who would have loaned yeah. you? We were like, <laughs> Oh my God! Pro, yeah. Like up until that point too, like not many pros were coming to New York. No one was even thinking about it. Taylor's. Yeah, you know Taylor Steele. He would always skip New York on his tour. He'd stop uh-huh. in Jersey, and that'd be it. And yeah. we were always like fiending for what it. About so us? it yeah. was, well, I think shortly after that, not was because of our movie, yeah. but that's when they discovered there's they discovered there's surfers in New York, like, and we should include them. And they have there's a lot of them. They have a really cool presence, and that's when like. It kind of exploded, you know. Media so. capital of the world. So yeah, you do exactly. something in New York, it gets all I over. know, I know. That's why we, this is our third time in New York. But, you know, like we were talking about earlier, it's so spread out. But, like, I was like, if we have to do Brooklyn. We just have to. Like, yeah. it's like, you got to play here. So that's that's why we're here. So uh, It's it's yeah. awesome. And how is, and now going back into the surf world oh, right. in some ways. Back uh, in, yeah. yeah. So, that, so that's the same reason. Yeah, you get sick of, you don't get paid and you're basically not that, you're not, 
treated very well. Like you're kind of just the guy that shows up and shoots stuff. So, and I just, I wanted to do something more creative. I started when I was really young. I, a lot of my footage was in, not a lot of it, but some of it was in Kelly Slater black and white because he used to pick me up from school and like I used to go shoot him surfing because I was the only one in town that had this like special camera my parents bought from Japan. So I just started shooting everybody and it just worked out. But, you know, I started really young and then I got to a point where I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to do something more exciting. So yeah, so it was right after All the Way Live. Those guys made the tour and I moved to Los oh, Angeles. Kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those guys, CJ and Damien, yes. yeah, moved to Los Angeles and I decided, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I want to do something else. I'm going to do something more creative and I, I don't know what this is. I think I want to do music videos. I want to direct them, but I don't even know what that is. Yeah. So I went there and started my way back from the bottom. Like I interned, I PA'd, I learned and did everything I could and made it to a point. And then it was funny because you, we talk you, about you guys you you've directed some huge fucking yeah not that videos now I've been a part of some part of them yeah, like yeah. Beyonce's right? yeah, yeah I didn't direct that but um, you were yeah. part of that you yeah. were a big deal of that I was just, actually we were driving here we drove by um uh, Steiner Studios no Silver uh, a Silver Silver yeah. yeah yeah and I was like that's where we shop that's where we shop Beyonce that's crazy. See the ladies because TJ was like what is that for was, um but in oh go ahead I'm sorry no um sort of jump in maybe you're leading to it in in a way but it's like when shooting the uh, cj was talking about the performative aspect right and surfers Mm -hmm. this is sort of like center stage yep is there an easy analogy between shooting the surfer going down the line the sort of hero archetype and then shooting your singer your dance whomever on stage is that sort of like oh i know how to I know how to treat a star. I yeah. Know like... Well, there's there's definitely a correlation to it because, you, you know, as you, when you make surf videos, you put them to music. And so they're sort of like, in a way, it's like surfing music video. So I don't know. I just don't know why. Actually, I was sitting in my living room. I just come back from a trip from Barbados with like Pat O'Connell and some guys for Surfing Magazine. And I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. And uh, Britney Spears' Baby One More Time came on TV. And I just was, I remember I was eating cereal and I just stopped and I was like, I don't know who makes these, but I, I want to do that. That looks like something I want to do. It looks fun. Like, you know, it just looked fun to me. Like, you know, like, how do you do this? I never thought, like, how is a music video made? So anyways, moved out to LA and then, you know, they went pro and we always stayed in touch and we'd see each other. And sometimes I would go and, you know, down and see them in, in the lowers and stuff. And um, it got to a point where, like, it's funny because we kind of, we talk about the this Antu if I see, like a, like a grand opening, grand closing, because we, like, I started with them and then right when they made the tour and then when we started shooting this it was like towards the tail end and it was very interesting to me I was with them when they were the 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 new kids on the tour and they were you know going up to like the Taylor Knoxes and you know and going like hey can you know give us a little advice or tell us anything you know trying to get any information they could and then when we started this film in Tahiti like you know we had like Jack Robinson was staying there and he was doing that to them wow so it was like I got to see them you know full circle so I hope you guys didn't take Taylor Knox's advice, though. <laughs> but was that a lot of pressure? <laughs> Wait, um, hold on, hold on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> was that? A, I mean, you you you've known the twins for for how many years? Like most of your life. Yeah. Like, all of your, was that a lot of pressure to do their like their feature documentary, their their story told on film? I mean, even mm-hmm. if you knew them well, felt comfortable with it, and you do a good job, like. Yeah, the the pressure I felt more was to get them to 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 tell the honesty and tell the things they didn't want to tell, and not that they didn't want to do it. It's just that I mean, think about that. Like you know, you know, lots of people are going to see this. Do you want to tell your deepest, darkest secrets on film, and do you want to tell them so openly? So it was that, and then also how to t- I, how to tell their story in a creative manner. Because like as you mentioned, we were talking to CJ. You know, you're trying to tell, you might, you think it, was, it might have been you, like you're trying to tell two stories. So it's like you got to weave them together and they have to fit. But because they're identical twins, that works. But I didn't want some cookie cutter, cut by numbers documentary where it's like this, 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 this. I wanted to, I wanted to do something more creative. I wanted to be fun. I wanted, at the end of the day, I wanted people to leave this movie and go, this is, that was fun. That was and, a fun and, movie. And right out of the gate. Daniel Tosh, folks will know of Tosh.0 Comedy Central show. He does awesome stand-up. Who's, who's a gr- he's your narrator for mm-hmm. the most it, part. What I loved about it is it had this 80s movie vibe to yeah. it. You know, it was like kind of that narration voice where it's kind of silly, but it, yeah. but it was so a good well choice. Done. Yeah, like Princess, awesome. Princess Bride. Or, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what he, what he is, is. It's called an unreliable narrator, which yeah. in literature and film, like Forrest Gump was an unreliable exactly. narrator. Yeah, so 
And that's what I wanted. I love the old Disney movies where the yes. narrator is not just a voice that comes in and gives you facts and leaves, but they're actually sort of a character in the movie. Mm-hmm. So I wanted that. And, you know, we, he was he was perfect for it. So, yeah, that was, that how was did you Did you know him? How did that relationship come to be? So how it worked was he, he grew up in Florida and he surfs and he... Um, he, he'd been a fan of CJ and Damien. So he actually tweeted, we actually, it's actually in the film when he tweets the yeah. 10 and I, I saw that I was on Twitter. And at the time we were looking for a narrator and I was, I didn't want someone from the surf world. I wanted someone outside the box and I saw him tweet that. And I was like, that's, he could be perfect. So the producers emailed his manager and his manager emailed back the next day and was like, he wants to get on the phone and talk about it. But just so you know, he doesn't do anything. He does his comedy show on comedy central. He does his tour and he won't do anything else. He d- turns down every movie role. He turns down every commercial. Mm-hmm. But he wants to talk to you guys about this. That's awesome. So we got on the phone. We talked about it. And I, I told him what I wanted him to do. I, I wanted him to be Daniel Tosh. Like, I'm like, I want people to know it's you, not just because your voice and the name on screen. Like, I want you to talk about yourself. Um, and he was into it. And then he came, you know, when we, we did the recording studio. You know, I sent him session. I sent him the script. And he showed up. And, you know, we knocked it out in about three or four hours. So. Did, he, did he add a lot to the script as well? He... It's funny, he didn't add as much as I expected him to. I was like, oh, he's going to rip this up. And I was fine with if he did yeah. that. Um, he he ad-libbed a bunch and changed stuff. And everything, honestly, there was nothing where I was like, oh, no, we can't do it. Everything was for the better. Yeah. So he uh, he brought some really good stuff. The uh, the Kelly Slater statue, that was him. Yeah. That joke, yeah. <laughs> it's, my, it's my favorite one in the whole movie, yeah. <laughs> um, what is it about Florida and filmmakers? You got like Russell Brownlee, you, mm-hmm. Dustin Miller, like yeah, all Dustin like Miller. North Florida kind of yeah. kind of crew that's like all kind of blown up in many ways. Yeah, I don't know. I think I, I was the, uh, the elder statesman in that, yeah. that group. But um, I don't know. I think, um, you know, when it happened out in California and, and then we were just imitating what they were doing with yeah. surfing. And then, you know, same thing. Like you have talent and then you have waves that maybe aren't as good and are consistent, but we have waves. So, you know, so it just sort of like filtered over, I think. And we kind of rose up to in our own, you know, it's almost like you could you equate it to <laughs> same with music, you know, yeah. like hip hop, there's West coast, East coast, and yeah. they all sort of feed off each other. So, nice. yeah. Um, and then how has it been with the film, like touring it and getting to see the reaction? This is your first documentary. Mm-hmm. Like, what have you learned? What, what are things you've taken away from this mm-hmm. that you want to bring to the next project? Well, you know, you, you make this and you, and you think it's good and you ex- think people are going to like it, but you never know. Yeah. Um, I did focus group it a lot, like really? with all kinds of groups of people from someone, the person that knows nothing about surfing to the hardcore That's surfer. why my wife and his wife like this Good, movie. Really good, good. <laughs> See, I, that makes me feel good because that's what, honestly, I built it so that you, the surfer, could show a non-surfer and they wouldn't get bored and want to walk away or not, or, get, or be like, I don't understand this or whatever. Well, the story and themes are all relatable yeah. to, to everyone. Exactly. You don't have to surf. Yeah. Like, yeah. The best, best surf movie is the one that doesn't really talk about the surfing. Yeah. It's almost more about characters and the people mm-hmm. and, and you, i thought you guys did a great job yeah, I mean, it seems like you you have fun with some of the archetypes of surf film yeah. i mean you play with the titles and like you'll, you'll like give their you know real name and then you'll have like a funny like yeah. part of it like i forget who it was but speaks fluent australian uh, that was jack robinson right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, like that's cute it's like yeah. it's in there it's just for there for a few moments you're like oh okay cool they're having fun with this yeah, that levity I think is. is oh, thank you. Yeah, because helpful. so another, I built the film literally. Okay, like if you're gonna make a, I, my thought was if you're gonna make a film on people, the whole thing should li- should breathe them. So I wanted it to feel authentic to who those guys were. They're really funny. They're really approachable. They don't take things too serious, mm-hmm. but they do. But when it does come things down, things are serious. They'll get serious. So I kind of built the whole movie, even the titles, like. The jokes and the mm-hmm. and the titles and stuff. I kind of like even the music, everything. I was like, I want it. I feel like if it's a biopic, it should breed the people who you're making it on, like in every little detail. Even if the audience goes above their head, you should do that. So that's what I did. That so, um, yeah. How is it working uh, with CJ and Damien in the sense? I mean, CJ is sitting in the other room here, yeah. but um, in the sense that like. Yeah, they're going to be as forthcoming as as any any person could be, you know. Uh, but you're the, you're the director. You need mm-hmm. to push to get to the gold. 
um, what was that process like getting to where you needed to go where you feel like okay we're actually producing something here that I that we set out to do to yeah to it. they were pretty good the whole way like there wasn't too much like you know those guys are such they're like blue collar hard workers so they'll like carry the camera up the mountain and like you know and doing stuff that you know your normal talent isn't going to do so they were great some of you know getting some of the other interviews yeah. and getting some other people that's a little more difficult like for instance um, Charlotte Dan-